Hello scholars, welcome. Mr. Hinkle here to talk about depositional glacial landforms. So glaciers are rivers of ice that travel across the landscape. And as they do, they carve out specific feature, features. These are called erosional features. But as they're carving the landscape, they pick up sediment and then deposit that sediment to create depositional features. And that's what we're talking about here. Various landforms created by a glacial deposition. So glaciers are powerful agents of erosion like conveyor belts that pick up, they pluck sediment from below, transport it great distances, and then when they melt, all that sediment deposits, and it deposits into specific, unique landforms, of which we're going through here. So, the deposition usually happens in an area called an outwash plain. All glacial deposits are collectively called glacial drift, but specifically glacial uh, deposits from melting glaciers are called glacial till. So this conveyor belt device picks up sediment, transports it, melts. That melted material is called glacial till. Till is portly sorted with grain sizes ranging from clay and silt to pebbles and boulders. It can also be as big as a car, as big as a house sometimes, but those uh, are rare occasions. Let's get into different types of depositional landforms. So this is a really cool image showing glacial moraines. Now we see stripes down the middle here and a stripe down the middle here. Basically, upstream of here, multiple glaciers converged. And as a glacier moves down a valley, it's carving out the sides as it goes along. This is called a lateral moraine. And then when two glaciers meet each other, they might have a medial moraine. There's a basal moraine at the bottom or a ground moraine, and then the leading edge is a terminal moraine. But what I want you to see here is, here's a ridgetop bedrock. This is a ridge of sediment, glacial till. This ridge of sediment is very similar to this ridge of sediment. What you see here in this mountain would be this mountain, this one you cannot see. As this glacier disappears, it leaves behind the medial moraine. And it is mapping the distribution of moraines or glacial till deposits from these big glaciers that we can recreate the extent of previous ice age continental glacial distribution using the landscape to understand Earth history, looking at our Earth to figure out how it works and what's been happening. I love it. This is geology. Cool. So moraines are something. Erratics. Erratics are huge blocks of rock that have been transported from one location to another. Oftentimes, there will be a rock somewhere that doesn't make any sense. How did this rock get here? It doesn't reflect the surrounding bedrock geology whatsoever. But oh, it's on top of the landscape. We can look to glacial deposition. So for all these depositional landforms, first they've been eroded. But now the feature that we see is because of deposition. A glacier carried this massive rock. This is called Big Rock in Alberta, Canada, one of the biggest glacial erratics in the world, and it left it right there when it melted. We see erratics all over the landscape in areas where glaciers have been. Kettles and kettle lakes. First, the glacier scoops a big hole into the ground and then it fills that hole in with some glacial till. And then the glacier melts and meltwater fills in that kettle. You have the erosion, the deposition, forming a kettle, and then filling with water, creating a kettle lake. Eskers. These are so fun. What we have to do here is use our imagination and say, this whole plain was covered with water. I'm sorry, with ice. It's water, but it's frozen. And then inside of the ice, little channels started to form as it was melting. Those channels were transporting sediments 
and then those channels inside of the glacier filled with sediment or glacial till, the rest of the glacier melted, leaving behind these long and winding ridges of stratified sediment and gravel called eskers. Drumlin, let's keep going. We're just firing off glacially deposited landforms. So here you have lots of sediment that's being transported and then they indicate a direction of travel of the glacier, their big mounds. Here you can see that's a huge drumlin. All those little shapes are houses on the landscape. That's awesome. They have a streamline or low angle side and again indicate glaciers have moved over the landscape by the features that they deposit. So here we've got a short list, moraines, kettle lakes, kettles, drumlins, glacial till, uh, deltas can be glacially deposited. You've got the outwash plain. This is where uh, all of the features really start to develop as, they're, as the glacier is melting. Some shout outs. Okay, so when the glaciers are happening, they're grinding up the landscape and then the glaciers retreat because of climate variability. But where does all that water go? Into the atmosphere because it evaporates. But then where does it go? It precipitates back down. And the precipitation of melting ice can create huge lakes. And we've seen this in the western U.S. Some of the biggest lakes are Lake Bonneville, Lake Lahontan. Here's <coughs> Pyramid Lake, Lake Tahoe for reference. <coughs> Excuse me, if you've ever been to Lake Tahoe, it's a big lake, but not near the size of some of the lakes that came after the recession of the last continental ice sheet. And so we have sediments depositing in these regions where pro or pluvial lakes have formed after the retreat of glaciers. We also have proglacial lakes that form during times on the edge of continental glaciers, especially as they're retreating, they're melting, and a lot of that melt water forms these proglacial lakes. The Laurentide ice sheet carved the Great Lakes, and then when it retreated, it filled with water. A lot of that water is now underneath the ground in the Ogallala Aquifer. It has since evaporated, become part of the water cycle, but it also filled the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes are proglacial lakes that originated during the last ice age from the Laurentide ice sheet. The basins were filled through the melting and the precipitation. So again, we see depositional landforms that are being created through the dynamic nature of the movement of glaciers across Earth's surface. Thank you so much. I'll see you again.